Hello, my name is Brian Cushing. I'm the program director here at Locust Grove. Uh, we are working our last day before we're off for a few days before the holidays, and so we decided uh, to make a batch of Smoking Bishop. Uh, now, Smoking Bishop is not something that's just relegated to the holidays. It's a very old drink uh, made any number of ways with, with port or red wine. Uh, we're doing it today because Charles Dickens mentioned it in his work that came out in 1843, A Christmas Carol. Uh, Ebenezer Scrooge serves us to Bob Cratchit after he's reformed. Um, and we're, there's actually quite a bit of ov overlap between Charles Dickens and uh, the people here who lived at Locust Grove because when Charles Dickens was on his tour in the early 1840s of the United States that led to his work American Notes, uh, one of the people who lived at Locust Grove at that point, George Cron, actually mentioned in his journal having seen Charles Dickens uh, when he was passing through Louisville. And then, unbeknownst to him, Charles Dickens heard the gossip about our little Mary, who uh, eloped with a, a veteran of the Napoleonic Wars that was uh, more than 30 years her senior, uh, which caused a big transatlantic scandal. So even though they might not have known it, no, even though they might not have known it, uh, the world of Charles Dickens and the world of Locust Grove was coinciding. Uh, and so the uh, recipe that we're taking this uh, from today, again, there was a ton of different ways to do this, but we're going with the one in Convivial Dickens. Uh, and one of the things I liked about this is they use all port, uh, which is a fortified wine. And uh, Dr. John Cron, who was another resident of Locust Grove, we know from his uh, purchase records, uh, liked port quite a bit. Uh, and so the port you can use, it can be whatever you like. Uh, if it's over $20 a bottle, just go ahead and enjoy that for what it is. Uh, but this is just kind of a little bit of uh, what we had on hand, uh, some Cockburns and some Sandemans. Uh, both are under 20 bucks, so it's, it's not gonna break the bank. Uh, uh, we've got those two bottles of port in this pot right here, and to that we are going to add just shy of a cup of white sugar, the peel of a lemon. The recipe actually says to grate it. I chose to peel it because I want to be able to remove it later, because if you, if you don't drink it all at once and you leave peel in there, it's going to give it an off flavor. Uh, the juice of that same lemon. We've got some cloves and some oranges. Uh, you take two oranges, uh, about an orange per bottle of port that you're using, uh, and you stick it with about a dozen cloves. And what we've been doing over here is we've been roasting these oranges that we stuck with the cloves over our fire. Now, if you don't have a hearth fireplace to roast them in like this, you could use a 400 degree oven. Uh, just make sure you get them a nice golden brown like this. When I've done this in the past, uh, I've cut them in half and roasted them that way. This recipe did not call for that, so we're just doing a little experiment today and we're gonna see how it turns out. So we're gonna, we're gonna slice these, because figure out which of these knives is less dull. We're gonna slice these up into about quarters. Ideally, you want to go with a tartar orange. Um, a lot of times, though, you're just going to be at the mercy of whatever is at your grocery store. The original recipe called for either Seville or Tangelo. Okay, so our oranges are quartered. I'm going to pull our port that I've been keeping warm off the fire, start to steam a little bit. I didn't want it to be too hot. Uh, and we're just gonna go ahead and add all of these ingredients to the pot. Our lemon peel. Lemon juice. just shy of a cup of sugar. Okay. To give that a good mix first. And if you're at home, what you're going to do now is turn up that burner a little bit so you can start to get this up to a simmer as you combine all the ingredients. We can turn up our heat here too. It's very easy. We just take the pot off and we add more of these handy hooks. And this way, when I push it back over the fire, it's 
gonna be closer and I've literally just turned up the heat. Uh, so we're gonna take a little break now and we're gonna uh, mix this until it gets nice and hot and all those ingredients are really combined.